Oh, no. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Barbecue sauce on brisket. Okay. If you're unaware, this is Joshua Weissman. He's a professional chef and a very popular YouTuber. A few years ago, he did a video on how to smoke a Texas style brisket. So I'm gonna watch it and give my thoughts on it. So you wanna learn how to make one of the most coveted foods in America. We're talking Texas brisket. Yeah. Okay, so off the bat, he gives us some B-roll of what it looks like the final product that he's gonna make right now, the brisket. And just from the initial view, I'm already noticing a couple of mistakes that he probably made during the cooking process. So first thing I see is that the bark looks not dark enough for a Texas style brisket. And the second thing is there is a lot of unrendered fat in this brisket. So I'm curious if we'll see the mistakes that cause these problems or if they've been edited out. But you know, I just haven't been able to make brisket as much as I'd like to. Part of that is due to the fact that, you know, I live in an apartment, it's kind of illegal to use my smoker, even though I have one, not saying that I use it or anything, because I. I don't. <laughs> okay, so he has a little bit of a smoking background, but from some of those shots, it looked like he's gonna cook this on an offset, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't have an offset smoker in his apartment because there'd be no way to hide that. So my guess is that this is probably one of the first times he's ever smoked a brisket on an offset smoker. Okay, let's talk about the most important part here, picking a brisket. If you don't start with a good brisket, you're not gonna have a good time. So you don't want a thin brisket and you also want that brisket to be as even as possible. You want it to have a giant front and then a really skinny back, otherwise, it's gonna cook unevenly. All very true. So I agree with a lot of what Josh is saying here about picking a brisket, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world if you get a brisket that's uneven because you're gonna even out the brisket when you're trimming it. And that's why the trimming technique is so important when you're smoking brisket. And if you don't believe me, ask award-winning pitmaster Philip. Pick out a good Where did that guy come from? Like, who is who is Philip? Is that his uncle or something? Let me watch that back. Award-winning pitmaster Philip. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to go super into what uh, Philip discussed because based on the description that Josh gave him, it sounds like Philip is a champion in the competition circuit of Texas style barbecue. And if my assumption is correct, then this could be problematic for his video. So competition barbecue is extremely different than backyard or restaurant style barbecue because in competition, you're basically trying to pack as much flavor into the brisket as possible because the judge is only going to take one bite of your brisket and and basically you have to stand out among a hundred other entries. But in restaurant or backyard style barbecue, you want your guests to be able to eat a lot of barbecue. So you want the flavor to be a lot more subtle. For example, Texas style ribs. If you order that at a restaurant, you'd probably get something with salt, coarse pepper, and a light coat of barbecue sauce to finish off the ribs. In contrast, here's Heath Ryle's championship rib recipe from the Memphis in May 2022 rib competition. I'm gonna be honest, I use mustard on the rib. Good layer garlic jalapeno and rub. And then I took my hot rub and I done three parts. I done one part of sweet rub, one part of honey, and one part of pecan. Mixed it all up in a bag. Put it all in a shaker and lay it on it. Water bath in the wrap and some spicy Use more honey rub in the foil. After that, pull it out. Sweet sauce and some more sweet rub. Let her tack up. And that's it. Send it. So if Josh is combining competition barbecue with restaurant style barbecue for this video, then this brisket may be in trouble. Now, I would normally never recommend this, but for smoked brisket, you really need to trim off about a quarter an inch or six millimeters off of the fat cap on both sides of the brisket. So the problem I have with his trim is that I can see on the lean side of the brisket that he has a big giant fat pocket of the deckel fat that he didn't cut out. And the reason why this is a problem is that at the end of the cook, in my opinion, one of the best bites of the brisket is the burnt ends, which is basically the side of the brisket on the point end that basically has bark all over on all the sides. When you cut it off, you get a nice, barky piece of brisket that just tastes absolutely, it's like a flavor bomb that goes off in your mouth. So because he didn't take the deckel fat off, a lot of that bark is gonna be on that fat side. So when he cuts out the fat, he's gonna be end up with a really small piece of meat that you can eat from the burnt end, or he won't cut out the fat, and then you end up with a burnt end that has really nice bark, but the whole thing is just mostly fat that no one's gonna eat. Okay, now we're ready to rub the brisket, which I feel like oftentimes the seasonings here are really overdone. I like to keep it simple and just let the flavor of the smoke and the meat be the star of the show. Let the smoke and the meat be the star of the show. That is basically the heart of the barbecue. There's no secret rub. There's no secret sauces. You know, it's just all about that smoke, the love that you put inside of the meat to make it taste 
delicious. To that, you're gonna add one tablespoon or nine grams of garlic powder, two tablespoons or 17 grams of sweet paprika, half a tablespoon or six grams of mustard powder, and half a tablespoon or four grams of freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so the low hanging fruit here is that I think a lot of people have heard that Texas style barbecue is just salt and pepper. However, me personally, I don't think there's any problem with the way that Josh has seasoned his brisket. It is still Texas style if he uses all those components. The number one barbecue spot in Texas, according to Texas Monthly Magazine, Goldie's Barbecue, shout out Jeremy Barbecue, check out his YouTube channel, is known for doing pepper, salt, and Lowry seasoning. And Lowry's has a bunch of different seasonings inside of it. So like I'm saying, what Josh is putting on the brisket, that's pretty much uh, homemade Lowry's. However, there may be a problem with the pepper that he chose to use. Now, I can't tell how coarsely he ground his pepper, but you want a coarse grind pepper if you're doing Texas style brisket because coarse pepper gives the bark or the crust of the meat a very unique texture that's basically the signature of Texas style barbecue. Oh, no. Okay, all my beginner barbecue people out there. So this is a tip that I learned from pitmaster Harry Sue. Check out his channel. He says, never rub a rub because what ends up happening is that the moisture from the meat is basically gonna mix together with all those spices and it's gonna create this weird paste. And this paste is going to act as a barrier that's gonna block the smoke from penetrating the meat. And at the same time, he's gonna have so much trouble getting an actual bark on the meat because you're gonna have this shell of seasoning that's just draped over the brisket. So trust me when I say this, okay? I'm saying this from experience. Do not not rub your rub. You can sprinkle it, lightly pat it, do not rub it. Now there are a lot of ways that we can go about this that work, but the key point is that we want the meat to end up at an internal temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. So my understanding is that Josh is trying to make this video for beginners trying to make their very first brisket. So there's nothing inherently wrong with going off of temps for beginners because I don't know, I think it's impossible to teach a beginner how to cook a brisket without giving them solid temperatures to follow. However, a brisket, because every brisket is different, they can all finish at different times. I've had briskets that finish at 180. You can have briskets that finish in the 210s. There's different ways that you can tell if a brisket is done. And if you're interested in that, I have a video that goes over all that information. I'll have that linked in the description below so you can watch that after this video. Smoke it for the listed temp, making sure to continuously feed the smoker wood to maintain heat and smoke levels. Optionally, while it's cooking, you can spray it a few times with chicken or beef broth, but try- No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. So earlier he said you want to have the meat and the smoke and just let those flavors carry and now he's bathing the brisket in chicken broth in competition i've heard many times people wrap their briskets in beef broth but why would you add chicken broth to your beef brisket it's like beef has such a beautiful rich flavor and chicken is like so watered down in comparison. I mean, honestly, I've never tried using chicken broth on a brisket, but I would just imagine that that would just mask the flavor that we're trying to get by developing this bark over this long period of time and the beefiness of the brisket. Double wrap it in strong aluminum foil with about a third cup or 78 milliliters of beef or chicken broth. Again with that chicken broth. No, don't put chicken broth inside of do not put chicken broth inside of your brisket wrap, okay? But if you have tried putting chicken broth in your wrap before, let me know how it turned out in the comments. Pull it out, leave it in the foil, and let it rest for 45 minutes to an hour. But quickly, two things about slicing brisket. Always wait till the last second to slice it because the pieces dry out very quickly and always slice against the grain. The easiest way to do that is to find the layer of fat separating the point and the flat, which you can see in this diagram, and then separate the two pieces, then find the grain on those individual pieces and cut it against the grain. The technique that Josh is explaining is legit. You can separate the point in the flat and then slice them up separately. And like he said, pro tip, cut against the grain of the meat. But me personally, I like to slice the brisket all together in one whole piece because I want to get as much bark on each slice of brisket as humanly possible. Now I know you want a barbecue sauce recipe, but my camera sort of shut off while I was filming that. And it's a really easy recipe, so it's all just going to be in the description if you want to end up making that sauce. Or you can go sauceless, nothing wrong with that. Barbecue sauce on brisket. Okay, look, I'm, I, I sound so pretentious saying this. If you like barbecue sauce on your brisket, it's barbecue, man. Enjoy your barbecue, bro. Put some sauce on it. It's all good. So I was pretty tough on Josh's brisket up to this point, but let's talk about some of the positive things. So while looking through this B-roll, you can see it has a decent smoke ring. 
The brisket is clearly not dried out, which is one of the biggest beginner mistakes is drying out the brisket, especially in the flat. And also you could tell by looking at the cuts, there's not a lot of like burned edges where there's like super dark, thick smoke rings. So that shows that he actually ran the fire pretty decently, which in my opinion is one of the hardest parts of running an offset smoker is managing that fire. So all in all, considering this is probably one of the first briskets Josh has ever smoked before, I give this brisket a seven out of 10. If you want my take on Texas style brisket, then you can watch the next video on your screen where I go through my entire process.